Hey friends all over the world. I don't know why I'm sitting so low. Dr. Keenan here. And uh, I want to tell you the shocking truth behind the so-called Asbury Revival. A lot of people have been talking about this. Uh, there is a revival that has been happening at Asbury College in Kentucky. It's a Bible school, seminary school. And uh, inside their chapel, it started off as a prayer service. And it's been going on continually for several days. And people are now flocking from all over the country to come to this revival. And uh, I want to tell you the shocking truth about it because I think people need to understand this. Now, let me, uh, I first want to give you a backdrop to what I'm about to say. And I want you to take this as a warning. I want you to take it as, a, as an insight, something that you need to know. A lot of people aren't really talking about this, but I need you to pay very close attention. Years ago, there was a revival in my region and a lot of people were going to this revival and and uh, a lot of people were coming from all over the world to this revival and it was very powerful there were miracles reported there were signs and wonders reported at this revival and we even had friends i had a bunch of friends that said man i'm going down there you know because my, my uncle needs a touch from god my mom this one needs healing that one needs healing etc and it grew it grew it grew i mean it was huge and one day I was about to go down there and the spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, do not go to this revival. And I said, Lord, well, no, this is a move of God. Everybody talk about it. He said, everybody talking about what's going on. He said, don't go down there. I said, what? He said, don't you go. Do not partake in this revival. And I remember being a little bit bewildered because everybody, including major leaders from all over the globe, we're talking about it and they were involved in it and they endorsed it and I said Lord but all these major leaders are saying that this is a powerful move of God he said don't go so I didn't go and of course that revival it really it it kind of imploded and it was really devastating for a lot of people now I say that to say this listen to me did you hear me carefully I believe that Asbury is a genuine move of God. For all the leaders who have been talking about this, the Asbury outpouring is a genuine move of God. In fact, it's not just happening at Asbury, it's happening in different places. It's happening in Tennessee, <clears throat> different campuses. Different campuses are seeing this move of prayer, are seeing this move of, of just worship and a desire to be in the presence of God. People are standing out in long lines waiting to get inside the sanctuary. But here's what I want to tell you about it. <clears throat> I want to tell you a few things about this revival that you need to understand. Number one, if we look at this as something unusual, I think we're going to miss the spirit of God because what God is really trying to establish is a new normal. What is happening at Asbury is normal. It is normal Christianity. It is, it is normal New Testament Christianity. In fact, the Bible says that in the book of Acts chapter 1, Jesus told the disciples to wait in the upper room. Or he told them to tarry rather. And they tarried in the upper room for 50 days. Maybe less than 50 days, but I mean, they were in there for days. I mean, they could have been there if they went in there during Passover time, let's say it was a little less than 50 days because Pentecost is 50 days from Passover. They were there for over 40 days, probably. 40 days tarrying for the presence of God. Forty days in the presence of God, they were tarrying, they were seeking God's presence, and this was normal. This was normal. It was not something strange and unusual. And the reason why these things have become so strange, and again, I want to say this. I believe what is happening in Asbury is a genuine move of the Spirit of God. I believe we should fan it. I believe we should support it. 
um, I'm probably going to go down there and see what's going on. I believe I have friends who've gone down there. I definitely believe it's a move of the spirit. I believe we should support it and pray into it and we should fan the flames of it. However, I want you to understand that when we talk about revival in America, when we talk about a move of God, what we have to understand, we cannot, we cannot jump on the bandwagon of a move of God if we are unwilling to change what we see as normal. Because what is happening at that school and many other schools is a new normal. God is establishing a new normal for the body of Christ. He is trying to show us that, no, there's something, there's something greater I desire to do. Okay? Number two, write this down. What is happening at Asbury, listen to this, is not meant to stop. It's not meant to stop. If, we, if we're not careful, we're going to be spectators and we're going to go and talk about how God is moving, how he's doing all these great things. And if we're not careful, we're going, we're going to, to, to make it a spectacle and not do what God... See, God said this to me. I said, Lord, why don't most revivals um, manifest what you intended them to manifest? This is what the Lord said to me. He said, Kenan, a revival, when you revive something, when you revive something, you do not revive something to go back to sleep. When you revive somebody, the whole point of reviving someone is to awaken them. <clears throat> and, and when you awaken someone out of sleep, it is so that that person can begin to function the way they were intended to function. So God is not doing these. God is not manifesting himself in this way so we can just talk about how great it is. And it's a social media fad. The reason why God is manifesting himself in this manner is because he desires to awaken the body of Christ and to establish a new precedent for prayer and intercession that we would develop the wineskin necessary to contain or to steward what God desires to do. It is not just to be a spectacle that we talk about in, in Charisma Magazine and CBN and now Fox News. It's not just meant to be that. It is meant to be, listen to this, a spark. It is meant to be an ember that causes us to develop a wineskin in the body of Christ that will steward the move of God in a fresh way. That's what this is about. And if we see it any other way, we are in danger. And I want to also caution a lot of you too. A lot of people are church hurt and they're bitter. And what they do is that they say stuff like, well, the reason why this is happening is because, you know, ain't no major preachers involved. You know, we don't want them to be involved. That's the wrong spirit. And if you keep doing that, I guarantee you that whatever we, whatever God started, it will not last. If we continue, because that's just as prideful as mega, as mega superstar preachers getting on the pulpit. It is just as prideful for people to say, we don't want any megastar super preachers involved with this, as it is, watch this, as it is for mega superstar preachers to get involved and to make it about them. It is just as arrogant and prideful. It is just as arrogant and prideful. But I believe if we will pray into this, pastors, don't demonize this revival. Don't discourage your members from attending this revival. That's not what I'm what I'm here this message is for. What I'm here to say is that we need to be very careful to steward this correctly and to make sure that we allow God's intention for allowing this to happen to come to fruition. That we allow the spirit of God to have his way the way he intends. I believe this is just the beginning. I believe we haven't even seen anything yet. This is normal Christianity. Our churches should have been having prayer meetings like this. We should have been having prayer meetings like this. The reason why we haven't had them is because the church has not had the threshold 
to be able to contain this. You can't be talking about revival if you're not willing to tarry in the presence of God for days if necessary. I mean, to call off a of work for weeks and take and take up all your your PTO and say, no, I got to go pray. I got to be in the presence of God. I got to worship God. But I'm telling you, it is not meant to stop there. If we allow it to stop there, we are going to miss what God is trying to do. And I believe that what is happening at Asbury and is happening at Lee University in Cedarville is meant to happen in churches all over the country, all over the globe. I believe it's going to happen in South Africa. I believe, I said this before, I believe a worship sound and a worship slash prophetic prayer movement is about to come out of South Africa like never before. I believe that, that, that it's about to happen in the state of Florida. It's about to happen in the state of Florida where, where a, a state that has been known historically for a lot of revival but also for a lot of nominal Christianity is about to shift. The prayer culture in the state of Florida is about to shift. I'm telling you, friends, listen to me. Listen to me. Beware. Beware. Be warned. Not against this revival. It's not a warning against the revival. It's a warning on what to do with the revival. It's it's we gotta be careful. I'm in no way addressing the leaders of the Asbury Revival. I'm talking about those onlookers, those of us who are onlookers, those of us who are seeing from afar or even up close what God is doing. We need to make sure that we steward this move of God and that we feed into it. And I'll, I'll end with this prophetic word that the Lord gave me. If many of you follow my Facebook, you'll remember that I posted this word. And it's so funny, it's happening in the winter months, the way the Lord prophesied, the way the Lord gave it to me prophetically. In the dream, there was a snowstorm. There was a snowstorm in the dream. And it was a, a storm that was that was literally ravaging the the, the, the nation. It was causing a freezing conditions like we've never seen before. Something that looked post apocalyptic. Things were freezing on contact. And people were frozen everywhere. And I remember, I remember in the dream, listen to me, you gotta hear this before I get off of this live. In the dream, it was myself and some other pastors, well-known pastors and leaders and, and evangelists. And we were like a remnant. And we ran into this house. And when we ran into the house, we were trying to bundle together and the cold, the freezing conditions were encroaching and fastly approaching the house. And we didn't know what we were gonna do. And all of a sudden I looked at an iron, a cast iron furnace. It looked like it was from the early 1900s. And I heard a voice say, light the flames. And so I lit this cast iron furnace. And when I lit the furnace, it literally defrosted everything. All the frozen conditions and all the ice that was encroaching on the home, it defrosted, it melted. And then it began to melt the ice outside and melt the ice for blocks. And it began to cause a, 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 a melting that the, the frozen ice became flowing water. The frozen ice became flowing water. The frozen ice became flowing water. And the Lord said to me in the dream prophetically, he said, stoke the flames, ignite the flames of revival. He said, because the igniting the flames of revival will cause those who are frozen in compromise to be defrosted. There are people, you know, the late Archbishop Benson Hosa was joking and he said, many are cold and few are frozen. Many are cold and few are frozen. And that's why stuff like this, it, it, it becomes a point of contention for people. It becomes a point of contention for pastors and leaders because they're afraid of the move of God. They're afraid of what God is going to do. They're afraid of what's going to happen to their people if their people catch wind that God is still moving the earth today. And so the Lord said to me that there would be a fire of revival that would ignite in the hearts of his remnant. And I believe I gave that word last year. 
And here we're seeing it right now. It has come to pass in many ways, or I shouldn't say it has come to pass. It is coming to pass. So friends, I'm telling you, and I'm giving you this shocking truth, this warning, and I'm telling you, we need to understand the heart and the intent of God of what he has allowed to take place, what he has uh, literally initiated by his sovereign power. This started off as a regular chapel prayer meeting. And now folks are coming from all over the globe to see what God is doing. I champion this. I support this. But, but with that being said, I am also issuing a warning. I'm issuing a caution that we must make sure that we continue in God's intent. And his intent was not for it to be a spectacle, but his intent was for it to provoke us, to awaken us so that we would be salt and light in the darkness, that the fire and the salt would literally thaw out the frozen church would thaw out a frozen country, would thaw out a frozen nation and the globe. That what is happening here, or, or, or I'm sorry, in Asbury, will begin to happen here in the state of Florida, will begin to happen in South Africa, from Cape to Cairo, from the four corners of the earth, people will begin to experience the presence of God like never before. And I've been telling people this, Follow my you, my Facebook, my YouTube. I've been saying this, that revival is breaking out. That revival, that the Lord said that the supernatural power of God was about to hit the church like never before. But the Lord warned me, he said, prepare the people. Prepare the people. Get the folks ready. Because we need to have the right wineskin. We need to have a compass. And we need to have a blueprint for what God desires to do. We need to have a blueprint for what God desires to do through this. Don't let this thing fizzle out and just talk about how God moved at Asbury. That's where we failed in the past. But God is saying, no, this thing is to be a provocation in your spirit. It is to provoke you to jealousy, a godly jealousy that you will say, Lord, what you are doing there, would you do it here as well? Would you do it just like we had Lakeland with Dr. Rodney and then we had Brownsville and then we had Toronto and then we had Smithen and so forth and so on. But friends, we need to pray and we need to tap into the presence of God. I'm telling you, I have prophesied this. I've said it before that this move of God is coming to the La Bahia del Espíritu Santo, the Bay of the Holy Ghost. It's coming to the Bay of the Holy Spirit. It's coming to your Christian campus near you. It's coming to South Africa, to Nigeria, that a movement of prayer, a movement of intercession, but not just intercession, awakening, so that the church can be the church. Please share this video. Remember that Jesus is Lord. Bye-bye.